Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt, the self-proclaimed king of armor destruction, and I've got an armor test today from Spartan Armor Systems. They are very commonly known for their steel core body armor as well as their steel targets and stands, but this one is an in-house level four or upcoming NIJ RF3 plate that they've produced, the Hercules, Hercules level four plate. This guy is 1.03 inches thick. It weighs six pounds, 13 ounces. So it's a little bit lighter than some of our other uh, US made level fours. And this one is actually multi-curve. You can see quite a few curves there. One of the coolest things that I think, you know, judging a book by its cover, which you should never do, but one of the coolest things that I think this plate has going for it is the cover. Very heavily constructed. We've got an embroidered logo on the front there. But that logo and that cover aren't going to last long here at the range today. If this is the first time that you're visiting my channel, I stick to as many NIJ constants as I can out here in the woods so that there's some data that you or even the manufacturer can take away from this and then have accredited at an actual NIJ lab. So I shoot at 45 feet. That is the official NIJ testing distance. I shoot at zero degrees because that is the worst case possible scenario for the armor. Any oblique shots increase the amount of material that the bullet has to pass through. I use a giant clay briefcase filled with Roma Plastilina number one, donated by Chavant. That acts as a compressible media and something solid for the body armor to stand up against. Now, because I'm out here in the woods, I can't certify the temperature needed for that clay. It's around 90 to 95 degrees, and it's only about 70 outside today, so the clay will get hard when it gets colder because it's non-hardening, but it's oil-based. So we'll see a representation of back face, but in an actual NIJ lab, you could see more. Seeing how this is level four, I get to bring out all kinds of cool threats for this to test against. I put a spreadsheet here at the beginning so that you guys can foreshadow what I'm gonna shoot at it, and then we fill it all in at the end and have a nice little summary. We also use a chronograph whenever possible. We have a Pro Chrono Pal Digital DLX so that when I'm using a particular round and I say that's the velocity it's going, we have instant feedback to know whether it is or not. All right, I forgot to mention in the introduction because this employs a ceramic strike face, Illumina, Per the NIJ, we do a preconditioning test where we drop the plate two times on its face on some concrete. Another thing I forgot to mention is that this plate employs a full edge-to-edge -edge ceramic strike face. So that strike, that ceramic is extending all the way out to the edge. I detect that there is foam on the strike face to help protect it against drops. Our first threat is going to be M2 armor piercing. That is the NIJ's level four or upcoming RF3 threat. These plates only have to stop one of these rounds, and there's always this misconception online that ceramic hits are one plate wonders, and some of them certainly can be, but I like to try to show the multi-hit capability of these plates. So I have two rounds of M2 armor piercing loaded into 300 Winchester Magnum because the NIJ calls for 2880 feet per second plus or minus, I think, 30. So you normally don't see that out of an M1 Grand or even a 1903 or any of the surplus. So I've loaded them in a 300 Win Mag. I have a TC Compass here, 22 inch barrel with a JK Armament rifle kit on there. So we should see our specification velocity. Both of these are not the plus P pressure that I typically load. I think I wanna save some of those. Maybe we can get Spartan Armor's boron carbide version. I will place this one in the upper left, like I do all the first shots. Oh, we were a little fast on that one. Could be the humidity today is making them go a little faster. Then the second shot I will place right next to it. Now that one was in specification. All right, our first two shots were right up here where I wanted them. I tried to put them up here so that we have the rest of this plate for our destructive purposes. And like I said, I was gonna ugly up her face pretty good. This cover is gonna get ugly. Like I said, I do detect some drop face foam there. Let's see what we got. Uh oh, Raggy. Got a penetration right there on that second shot. First one stopped, no problem. Back face wise, there is a good little dimple there. We'll have to measure that in a second. Now this is somewhat concerning, if you can see there. 
is it looks like these layers aren't pressed very well together. So that bullet kind of just looks like it pushed it out of the way and it found a way through that one. That will be interesting to test some of our other threats against this. The ceramic is still pretty hard down here. I am kind of concerned that this plate couldn't stop two rounds of M2AP, but in full transparency, the NIJ level four and upcoming RF3, like I said, one shot is all. So I'm gonna shoot a couple 308 threats at this plate, and then depending on those results, we're gonna shoot some 556 at them. So I have M14A1, it's an armor-piercing incendiary round. Got a nice little hardened steel core in there. And I have M993AP, this is the Army's current issue armor-piercing round. It has a tungsten core, 130 grains going really, really fast, even out of a 16-inch. I've got our CZ557 here, Urban Counter Sniper with the JK Armament Rifle Kit on there. We'll take these shots in the lower part of the plate and then go see what we did. And then we'll base some other threat assessments on the results of these guys. Typically in the past, alumina plates with a fairly thick strike face have been able to stop this round, the M993, from the 16 inch. So the API will be first. This will be the lower left of the plate. Nice bright flash down there that I saw. Then the M993 will be on the right hand side of the plate. Good velocity off that. All right, let's go see what we did. All right, our M14 A1 shot was down here. Hopefully the third camera caught the smoke from that starting to cause some significant damage to this plate. Our M993 AP was over here. So we're far enough away from any other shots that these sh should be considered fair hits if this alumina is holding up pretty well. Place those bets in the comments below. Ho! It stopped both of those rounds. That's impressive. There aren't a lot of level four plates that are stopping our M993 from the 16 inch barrel. The 22 inch continues to pose a threat against all of them, but that's impressive. We did see a little bit more back face down here because my shot was a little bit low, but this shot right here from the 16 inch, that's quite a bit less than up here that we see saw from the first M2AP shot. I grabbed our depth gauge just to see what this kind of looks like. Our original M2 AP shot is 30 millimeters. Like I said, if this is warmer, it's going to show quite a bit more. 15 millimeters on the M993. And then the API that hit down here in the corner at a weird angle, 34 millimeters. So we're seeing a good control of back face. We're not seeing any huge softball dents in this. Let's throw a few more threats at it. We're going to stick with our 30 cal threats, but we're going to up the barrel length a little bit. I have a regular NIJ level three threat here that I like to use to kind of judge back face a little bit. This is our PMC or Poon Sang M80 ball. And then I have the Army's new enhanced performance round. This is M80A1, it's 130 grains, copper core with a steel penetrating arrowhead tip. Rockwell hardness right around 49 to 52 from what I've measured before. We'll take that shot first. The mosquitoes are biting me in the head. And then we'll take these two M80 ball shots around it. Go away, mosquitoes. We have a 22 inch TC compass with the JK Armament rifle kit on here. I should finish the review up for that someday. Really cool Form 1 can. This one's going to be, the M80A1 is going to be right in the middle of the plate on the Spartan logo towards the top. Really good velocity off that. Then the first M80 ball will be on the left below the original M2 AP shot. Good velocity. Ah pretty good velocity there and then the last one will be over to the right below the second m2ap shot 
Not sure if I get a velocity off this based on how far off the edge I'm going. But we got it. All right, our shots from our M80 ball were right here and all the way over here. And our M80A1 was right in the center there. That embroidery little logo helps keep that cover pretty well, but there's not much left of it. I hear a lot of ceramic in there. Zoom out a little bit. Place those bets in the comments below. So far this plate is holding up pretty well. I would think any room for improvement would be pressing the layers of polyethylene in the back together. Ho! Oh, no pass through folks. We're starting to get a little bit more dimples on the side here from those 308 shots because there's a lot more energy. Our M80 a1 right there pretty pretty pointy cavity there but it stopped it from the 22 inch barrel that's a good thing that's pretty much a level four threat i haven't found a level three plus besides the la police gear and the hoodie that uses a really th thick ceramic stripe face to stop that now if we do a torque test on this plate you can see there's quite a bit of ceramic coming out of it i think i've done a pretty good job showing that ceramic plates are definitely multi-hit capable now obviously steel can take a lot more hits depending on the threat i don't think you'll find any level four steel plates in existence that i'm aware of that are going to be as light as ceramic and to be able to stop some of these advanced threats like m2 armor piercing so for our 556 threats i have m193 that is a 55 grain full metal jacket we have a TC Compass 22 inch barrel, so we're gonna see over 3,300 feet per second with that. And I have the Army's new enhanced performance round, M855A1. It has a copper core like M80A1 and an arrowhead steel penetrating tip. It is actually harder than M80A1 at around 59 to 60 on the C scale. There's not much left on this plate. It has failed a torque test, so I will call out the shots as best as I can based on what I think is a good spot on the plate. We have a turbo 556 on the front as well. So this first shot is going to be up where the word Spartan is, like kind of like where the R is. Good velocity there. Then this one will be above the R where Hercules is. Now our M193 will be right next to that last shot, so above the L on Hercules. And then this last M193 shot will be about where the N is on Spartan. Pretty good velocity off that. All right, let's go see if I have any holes in my clay. Apparently I wasn't recording when I said all this, so I have to say it again. Our first shot of M855A1 was right here. Our second shot was all the way down here. Our first shot of M193 was right here. And then our final shot was all the way up here. There's not much left of this cover. The good thing, about like the polyurethane and the rubberized coverings is it's easier to see shots off of because there are some fragments that do come off of the plate and they make little auxiliary holes in the, the cover when it's nylon and fabric. So it's a little hard to see, but so far the covers hold up pretty good. What do we think? Ho, oh, no pass throughs. Here were our 556 dimples down here and our dimples for our other 556 are up here. We're gonna do a tear down here in a second and we'll double check to make sure there are any holes in the back of the polyethylene. But that's impressive with as much ceramic that is falling out of this plate all over the table here that this still was able to stop four rounds of 5.56 going at maximum velocity. Now a lot of people's favorite, the tear down. Here is our back cover removed. I was able to get this cover off pretty easily. I did confirm that our only penetration was our second shot of M2AP right there. This is polyethylene. As you can see, it doesn't look like they're pressing these layers together very well. Definitely would like to see 
that done a little better. Maybe even add a few more layers to help with back face. But otherwise, did a pretty good job. They, they're not completely delaminating. We've seen some other tests where there's big sections of this coming apart. Otherwise, pretty standard there. Now, here's our ceramic strike face right here. Alumina, like I mentioned. I measured what I could find of a solid piece of ceramic at around 380 thousandths thick. That's about average from what I've seen. Some plates are about 400 thousandths. That may explain why some of them can stop the higher pressure M2AP a little better or more than one shot. This is a type of maybe fiberglass or aramid fiber mat that's used to help bond this to the polyethylene. Although it didn't do too good of a job, I was able to peel it away, but it looks like it's doing a good job of at least keeping the ceramic on here. Would like to see maybe some more adhesives or something, or actually encase the ceramic in bo this both side to side. And then over here is a lot more of the alumina. Here is our drop face foam protectant. That's a good thing. And then there is our front cover, what's left of it. So not too bad. As you can see, there is edge to edge coverage. And that's about all she wrote, folks. I have destroyed this plate and I would say it did a pretty darn good job. I'd say our Hercules from Spartan Armor Systems definitely lived up to its name. It's not the lightest level four that we've tested. It's also not the heaviest, but it is multi-curve. It is edge to edge strike face and it only weighs six pounds, 13 ounces. Now, while it did have trouble stopping that second round of M2AP, maybe because the ceramic is a little on the thinner than average side, like I said, I've seen some ceramic at over 400 thousandths and that's gonna help break up that projectile. But all of our other threats, including our M993 and our 556 threats after most of the plate was already compromised were stopped without an issue. While these plates are $125 more per piece than the 1155 multi-curve from RMA, they are also over a pound lighter. So that is something to take into consideration as you are building out your carrier. It's about time for me and my kid to get the heck out of here and go home for the evening. So at the close of all my videos, I take a moment to thank all those who helped make these possible. Number one is my Patreon supporters. Number two is the anonymous donator who donated that Spartan Armor Systems Hercules for us to test. If you guys want to see me test any more of Spartan Armor plates, especially that boron carbide that they just released, leave a comment below or if you see them making any posts on social media, tag me and say Buffman wants to destroy your plates. And of course, number three is you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range.